All right, we will go ahead and get started here. We'd like to welcome Victor Hovland into the interview room at the 2022 Arnold Palmer Invitational presented by MasterCard. Victor, if we could just get an opening comment from you ahead of your fourth start at the event. Yeah, no, this is a, a cool place. Um, I played here as an amateur and I had a great experience making the cut and, and um, just felt like this was kind of the moment where um, I felt like I belonged a little bit or I got confidence enough to um, at least b believe that I could play the PJ Tour because I had played a couple of uh, uh, PJ Tour starts prior and I missed a cut in, in both of those events. But uh, I, I feel like making the cut and I think finishing 40th without my best stuff, that really gave me a lot of confidence going forward. So, um, yeah, it's a cool place, but um, also hope to finish better than 40th this week. Well, just in that short time, you've quickly risen through the ranks in golf up to number four in the world right now, number 11 in the FedEx Cup. Um, just a comment on the, on the state of your game entering this week. Yeah, no, I felt I, I feel good. Um, played good at, um, um, at Genesis a couple of weeks ago, and I had a nice off week last week. It was uh, it was really cold and pretty icy, so I didn't really get to practice a whole lot. Um, but I feel like these last couple of days have been good, and I'm um, really starting to find my stride again. All right, we'll take some questions out here from the media. If you have a question, we'll get a microphone to you. We will start on the right aisle with Steve DiMeglio, USA Today. When you don't uh, practice much in an off week, do you ramp up your preparation Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday? Uh, I don't really have any set plans. Usually I, I do practice a lot in my off weeks. Um, so I don't really have to not panic, but I don't have to spend too much time on the golf course. Um, and I'm getting ready to a pretty busy stretch, so I try not to exhaust myself out here. But um, obviously preparing is, is important, and you want to keep as sharp as, as you can. Your thoughts on the course? It's in, it's in great shape right now. The rough is probably the thickest it's been um, in the, in, out of all the times that I've come here. Um, and it's a little bit different now with the fairways being Bermuda. They're not overseeded. Um, so I don't know how much of a difference that's going to play later in the week, how firm they're going to get. I don't really know. Um, but it's in great shape right now. And, and um, yeah, it should be, should be a fun week. Other questions for Victor? Yep, go ahead. Thanks. Um, Victor, the... Tee shot at number six is one that invites you to bite off as much as you dare. What's your comfort zone there? Where do you aim? And, and when you get on the tee on a particular day, what's the thought process to adjust that if need be? Yeah, it's, uh, it's an interesting tee shot. Obviously, hypothetically, you can take it right at the green, but uh, it's not all of us that have that carry. Um, and most of the time, I feel like the prevailing wind is a little bit into the wind, so um, you you at least for me every day I just try to hit a driver just left of the bunkers there's some small trees just left of it and um, just really try to hit it uh, at those trees I don't really find any advantage trying to cut off more distance going left because you're just taking more water into play and especially if the fairways get firmer you can hit a good shot and you roll out in in the rough um, and then you just have to lay up so um, you know, in some other wins, I might even hit three wood just to hit the fairway, and I know I'm gonna, um, you know, have a, a decent enough club to to hit it on the green. So uh, it all depends on the win. We'll go over here to the left to Kathy. You mentioned playing on Bermuda grass. Do you feel like playing at Oklahoma State has given you a better understanding of that kind of turf versus when you came over here? Uh yeah, I would say so. Um, we mostly have bent grass greens, but we do have Bermuda fairways. Um, so I, I would say, especially chipping um, off of it is is can be very tricky, especially um, when you're coming from Europe. We don't really have a lot of Bermuda, um, but at the same time, I don't I don't really find the the fairways out here to be super grainy. Um, so I think even if you're in the fairway and you're chipping, um, you're not too worried about the grain. So. Um, I, I don't really think that's going to be uh, the biggest factor this week. Thank you. I think Steve had a couple more over here. A couple off topic, Victor. I think you were f born five months after Tiger won in 1997. 
Um, can you tell me when's the first time you became aware of Tiger, and from that point on, how much of an influence has he been on you? Yeah, I, I don't really remember the first moment, to be honest with you. Um, the the earliest memories I kind of have from uh, remembering that he had an impact on me was just kind of sitting in in class and we had school computers and I would just watch his highlights all day. Um, so that was, uh, yeah, that's kind of, you know, how his influence have, has kind of affected me. But I, I, as a, like when it comes to a moment, the first moment, I, I can't really tell you. How old were you when you started looking at, at the computers? Uh, I was probably around like 12. Um, yeah. At that time, did he have any influence on you? Did he make you go into the gym? Did he make you work harder? Did he make you do anything? It was, uh, it, it was kind of just an overall motivator. Uh, just like seeing what he did on the on the course, and he had such charisma, the way he did it. You know, the fist pumps, and obviously hitting the shots out of the rough, and slicing around trees, and it, it was just kind of the the charisma that he had on the golf course and, and pulling off those shots. They just wanted me to, um, or motivated me to, to, you know, just to play golf and have fun, essentially. And I know for next week, I know you've only played the players once. Uh, the general feeling is that the 17th hole is the toughest tee shot. I've talked to a bunch of players. They say it's the 18th. How tough is 18 and why is it scary? Yeah, um, yeah, I agree with that sentiment. I think 18 is, is way harder. Um, it's just so narrow, and you obviously know how penal the, the left side is. Um, you know, if you pull it, one thing is kind of hitting a decent shot and it rolls in the water. Um, you know, at least you kind of get to, to drop up there. But, um, yeah, if you pull it straight off the tee, I mean, it's a re-hit. So, and obviously the right side is no good either. You just kind of have to step up and hit a good shot. So, um, you know, the 17, you, you have a wedge in, and you can always just aim middle of the green. Um, so... Yeah, I'll, I'll take a ball in the fairway on 18 every day. Michael, just Thank behind you. Steve. Uh, I remember early in the uh, pandemic, you were doing a lot of driving, and I'm wondering if you still are, if you're back on planes now. Yeah, mostly back on planes again. Um, I feel like I've seen most of the U.S. now, um, especially kind of on, on, you know, in the Midwest and kind of over on this East Coast. Um, you know, the, it's not that much, ex or it's not that exciting driving through Oklahoma and Texas anymore. So um, maybe I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll take it to the West Coast sometime. But as of right now, I, I think it's, uh, I value the importance of kind of recovery and, and saving time and, uh, and staying up all night driving and drinking Red Bulls is probably not the way to go. Are you flying some commercial and what has what that experience been like if you're, if you're, uh, flying commercial? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's, it's kind of what I've always done. Uh, I do fly some private um, here and there. But, you know, it's just, uh, yeah, I mean, it is what it is. It's, uh, I used to take public transport when, when I was uh, going to school in Norway. And, and, you know, you would fly commercial to events around Europe. And it's what we're done, what we've done with college here in, in the States, playing for Oklahoma State and, and um, yeah, obviously done a lot as a professional as well. So yeah, it is what it is. Thank you very much. We'll go over here to Garrett on the left, and then we have one in front. Victor, how you doing? Thanks for taking the time. Uh, I wanted to ask you about your practice overall. Obviously, aim point's been huge for your career, really getting to the second win and whatnot. But the specific putting routine that you do um, the, around the hole, mm. the clockwise, give us an idea of the thought process there. Yeah, so um, I kind of got that drill from Jeff Smith when I started working with him. And obviously, it's a, it's a simple drill. You, you, you kind of see a lot of guys use it. Um, I, I kind of mix the distances. Sometimes I only do 10-footers. Sometimes it's more like four to six feet. Um, I've kind of struggled. Like I, I feel like I'm a way better putter now that I started using aim point. But I've still missed few, a few too many putts inside kind of six feet. So that... That's kind of what that drill emphasizes. But also, Jeff kind of did a good job of teaching me, you know, how you can, like, if you know the straight line on a certain putt, 
And if you have a putt on opposite side of that, you know, knowing how it's going to break based off of where the straight line is. Um, so that kind of gives you an idea when you're out on the, on the course and you feel the putt is kind of straight. And if you move slightly off of that, you know, to have a certain idea where the ball is going to break. So um, obviously it serves kind of multiple purposes, just green reading aspect, but also, you know, just, just hitting the short putts, which I need to get better at. Go to Bill right here in the front row. Victor, you were talking about just now about driving instead of flying. I mean, you were kind of making your debut on the tour in the midst of the pandemic. Did that pose, you know, more challenges to acclimating to the new setting out here? I would say it made it easier um, just because playing in college, you don't really play in front of that many people. And obviously, when we first started out in the pandemic, there were no fans allowed. So you kind of had a similar feel, uh, whereas I think a lot of the the bigger names they they might have felt a little deflated a little bit, you know, playing with no fans because they're kind of used to getting riled up and and hear noise. Whereas me, I was just kind of I was always competing uh, within myself or you know keeping track of my score and you know uh, just playing by myself essentially and my playing partners. So for me, I think it made it a little bit easier, um, whereas it can be uh, tough if, you, you know, you play your first tour event, and let's say it's this week. Um, I played here as an amateur, my third PGA Tour event, and, I mean, coming down the 16th, 17th, 18th hole, I mean, there's, there's a lot of people, and there's water right next to it, and, and I'm sure, you know, you're going to hear some comments if you hear in a, hit in the water or you miss a short putt, so... I think that aspect of it is uh, is a little tougher to get used to. At the same time, though, there were more restrictions in terms of uh, you know how much you could hang around with other people, and so I mean you're you're the new kid on the block, so to speak, and you can't just converse with anybody anytime you want, right? I mean, yeah, I think um, people on the outside, that's definitely the case. I mean, tour players like we would. I mean, we'd still kind of play practice rounds and, and stuff. But as you said, I was a new kid on the block, and uh, there was a, uh, definitely an adjustment process, um, just kind of understanding what my routines were and, and you know, how to talk to other guys on the tour and, you know, um, get familiar with a couple players. But uh, I, I don't really mind being by myself. I like being social, but at the same time, I don't mind being by myself. So for me, that wasn't... A, a big deal, whereas uh, I'm sure other guys uh, would struggle more in during that time. Thanks. All right, we got time for one more question. We'll finish up with Brantley in the middle here. That, that kind of seg segues into my question. Um, there's a there's a photo of you from the PGA last year at, at at the hotel, like walking up to your room with your bag on your shoulder. I don't know if you saw that. I did, but, yeah. But it, it's kind of a cool photo. It kind of talks to, speaks to the loneliness of golf. What's the what's the key to kind of you know, dealing with that for you? Yeah, I, I don't like, I don't see it as a burden like that. I, I did see the picture. It was, it was a cool picture. Um, but it was more like I, you know, obviously playing the PJ tour, you're making a lot of money. There's a lot of people watching you and cheering for you and that's all great. But what I take most like pride in is, you know, just kind of waking up, going through my routines and then at the end of the day, you know, ask myself, have I kind of done what I needed to do to get better? And if the question is yes, or the answer is yes, then, you know, I, f I feel good about myself. Like I'm, I'm happy about the day, you know, whether I'm walking down the, the lobby with my, with my golf clubs on my back, you know, that's, that's not really, like I don't see that as a problem. I just, you know, it's kind of like a pat on the back. Okay, I've kind of done the job, and, and hopefully I have another good day tomorrow. And then if I could add just one more real quick. Do you, do you know where you finished in the PIP? Is that something that you that you thought uh, or cared about? or No idea. And do you oh, have yeah. any, after seeing the results, do you have any inkling to get a Twitter account? <laughs> um, I mean, obviously it would be nice to make the PIP, but at the same time, I, I don't really, I'm not going to go out of my way to, to try to make that a goal. Um, you know, I, I spend way too much time on my phone already with just answering messages and and. Um, yeah, I, I see it more as a distraction than, than, um, than what it, it's doing to help me. So um, my main focus is just to play better golf and, and um, 
Um, that takes care of most things. All right, thank you.